We got an awesome collection of print fails and the fixes for it, including an update from last week's Print Fix Friday. This is episode 22, where we're going to be talking all about why ABS kind of sucks. A couple of fan submissions as to why the heck their print randomly turned into spaghetti, as well as weird patterns for top infill. Some great fails coming at you with some great answers. All that and more Print Fix Friday episode 22. Let's get into it. Welcome to the 3D Musketeers YouTube channel. My name is Grant. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like and get subscribed. We're going to be going through quite a few print fails today and looking at how we can get them solved. The first one up is actually not a fail. It's a follow up to the Totoro failure from last week with one of our patrons, Jimmy, where he actually printed this thing perfectly. Very, very happy to see it. And if you want to join the elite group of patrons, you can do so at patreon.com slash 3D Musketeers. Or you can join YouTube channel members, which get you, you know, similar perks. Moving on from that, we move into a fan submission from Dice Tower Dungeons, where they came back to a half-finished print and some spaghetti, trying to figure out what happened there. We then talk a little bit about rafts and the warping that can occur in a specific photo which is not actually warping, but stay tuned. We then move into a Twitter post that we found with Mando, who's had a bit of a flesh wound, where a part no longer is there. And as prints do, sometimes they find a way. And last but not least, we're gonna show you guys one of our own fails, something that if you watch the channel, you'll be quite familiar with. I talk a little bit more detail about what went wrong in the Wednesday video, where we showed you guys how to do custom supports inside of Lychee Slicer. But enough of me telling you what's coming up. I should tell you to get subscribed and leave a like. And then, let's jump into the fails. As promised, we're starting with my neighbor, Totoro. We went over this part last week. Anytime that we fix fails, we love to reach out to the person who had the issue to see if they've solved it. And thankfully, Jimmy responded and said, yes, and sent us a couple of photos. What you're looking at is a My Neighbor Totoro model. I have one of my own, had this little guy for a few years now. The big issue that we saw in that print was that he wasn't oriented correctly and there weren't enough holes for drainage of air and resin, which caused him to cavitate. This was in the previous episode from last week. We'll card to it, so if you guys want to take a look. But this print is absolutely gorgeous. The lamp came out beautifully. I could not be happier with the way this thing came out. We got the back of Totoro looking prim and proper as always. I just wanted to follow up on that so you guys could see it. little happiness to start off our Print Fix Friday. We have a submission from a fan. This is from Dice Tower Dungeons, good friend of the channel. This print was going great, absolutely great, until it wasn't. We can see that it looks like maybe some Oh My Gold Prusament, although most likely I'm thinking this is just some generic gold silk PLA. Silk filaments tend to be way more troublesome than others, generally requiring upwards of 5 or 10 degrees centigrade hotter temperatures because they shrink quite a bit. There's also a slight chance with them where if you're doing lots of small movements that they will work hard and effectively jam in your nozzle. I'm not exactly certain the additive that is used to make silk filament shiny. I heard someplace that it was polycarbonate, which is a shinier filament overall. But nonetheless, my guess here is that we might have had a bit of a clog that cleared itself a few layers up. This can happen, especially if you're running something like a Prusa Mark 3S, like we're seeing here, where you can have that dual gear drive system that can tend to push through clogs. One thing I will note, it does appear that there is a little bit less extruder pressure than we would normally see. It's commonplace to see one or two threads proud of the cover here for the extruder plates. This is your cover for your extruder plate. There's a screw and a spring that sets the tension of the idler onto the drive gear itself. The idler and the drive gear are bound together by a gear so it's a dual drive system, single motor, dual gear drive system. If you don't have enough pressure, a small jam can actually create an instance where the filament starts to grind, gumming up the gears and basically causing the print to fail. Now, what exactly happened here? I don't know. Unfortunately, Dice Tower Dungeons only has this one photo 
and that is a bit of a bummer, but I would hedge a bet that it was a retraction-based failure because of the silk filament. When we look at some of the prints that we do with silks, including most recently, we did this beautiful bowl from Clockspring 3D. This thing is massive. It took like 26 hours to print. The silk is pickier than others. You can actually see here on this back edge, you can see some of the retraction artifacts from when the printer moves to take the photo. This is not common in any other PLA that we use other than silks, and that's because silk tends to shrink quite a bit, which also work hardens it at the same time. So my recommendation to them, we spoke over Discord a little bit, was to increase their temperatures. They were running 210 C, and I said, give it a shot at 215 or even 220 if you're feeling especially randy, because I do believe that will make a bit of a difference. Why are my rafts warping like this? We can see there's some information provided. We have ABS, the bed is 100C, and the nozzle is 245C. This does appear to be some sort of an Ender clone. It looks like a very typical Ender bed clip there in the background. And if it is, be a little cautioned running Enders on ABS. Their beds are not really designed to last at 100C. And if it is a Gen 1 style with the XT60 connector, make sure everything is clean. Make sure you don't have soldered wires. There are some things to be aware of when you're working on this. So just be careful about that. The next thing. You should be printing inside of an enclosure. ABS is one of the few lower temp polymers that can be printed on basically any printer that warps like crazy. Normally materials like polycarbonate, nylon, peak, PEC, and Ultem that do warp quite a bit if they're not in a minimally enclosed chamber, preferably heated, those are normally well above the temperature that you can run on a stock Ender 3, which does not have an all metal hot end, which means it has a PTFE Bowden tube that goes all the way down to the nozzle. Rafts were originally made for ABS, and this is true because back in the day, we didn't have heated beds for ABS. We actually wound our own heaters or we used resistors basically to create heat so we could melt thermoplastic. It was archaic. I'm so glad that we've come to this point where you can go get a 3D printer for 200 bucks and it's pretty decent. Speaking of, did a review of the Ender 3 V2 a while back. Go check it out. ABS, this is an ABS part here in crazy lime green. And yes, this is a very big part. I don't know if it'll be obvious, but there's a pretty significant warp. Starting here, you can actually see the mark right there where the warp started to occur. This warp is because the part cooled down. Our air conditioning actually turned on, and even though the printer is fully enclosed, it is not fully sealed. And that draft of the cold air going by created a heat exchange, cooling down the chamber, causing the war. I'm guessing that's what's happening here too. We can see that the layer is really, really warped, and especially over here as well, it's warped. My guess is that you have your cooling fan turned on, and when you're working with ABS, you want zero cooling whatsoever. Preferably, you want to print in a fully enclosed printer. If you can do it, heat the enclosure. If you do want to add heat to your enclosure, but you don't have that opportunity, make sure you get subscribed because we're working on a product designed specifically for the 3D printing industry. I'm really excited to share this with you guys relatively soon. I'm thinking a month or two before we have a you know, really clean working prototype. There's actually a couple of them running here in the shop. I've just never shown you because we're doing long-term testing to make sure that they work well before we go to market with them. But ultimately, this is cooling of some sort. ABS, when it cools, it shrinks, and that's what causes that warping. So if on layer five or six, which this is probably layer five or six for the raft, you're turning on cooling, as it's doing that bridge, the ABS is warping and warping and warping, causing it to look like crap. Action items for this. One, get rid of the raft. If you do not need it, do not use it. They're antiquated. In this case, it might help a little bit, but I think we have to look at the major cause of the warping, which is cooling. You need to fully enclose this printer. And whether you do it with a LAC end table style enclosure, you do something that's a little bit fancier, maybe utilize a full acrylic enclosure, a wham bam hot box, something from printed solid, or you go really cheap and you go with a cardboard box, something is better than nothing. Be aware, with cardboard box, it's kind of flammable. So like, you know, 
be careful in things, please. But I think that's going to solve a lot of these problems. No cooling, full enclosure, heat it if you can, and try to remove the raft. It's not immediately required, but try to remove the raft. And I think those three fixes will make things much, much better. We have a print that I saw on Twitter from Nicole Jenkins. 100% planned illusion piece based on Mando's lack of skills with dark sabers. Promise. Model from Thingiverse. So what happened here? Well, I have a file. So let's take a look. This is the file. I believe this one is even totally support free. Let's take a look. If it is, it's a pretty decent file. Now, this file does need some support. But the support is not really the issue here. The issue here is that uh, Mando's sustained a bit of a flesh wound, if you will. His leg is missing. It's just a flesh wound. And so how do I believe this occurred? As printers are moving, if you do not have Z-Hop enabled, it doesn't happen. What Z-Hop is, is as your extruder is printing, when it retracts to move, it will come up a little bit, move over, and then go back down and continue printing once again. This is really, really key. What I believe happened here, it was moving from one leg to the other. It knocked into this leg, causing it to fall over. But what is really interesting here is the part found a way. Eventually, it likely spaghettied a little bit. You can even see where it caused some layer damage. The printer ran into it most likely and shifted just a hair. But eventually, it created enough swarf that it was able to build on top of it perfectly fine. So I think you have the Monty Python of Mandalorians. I'm invincible! How do you solve this problem, though? Well, I've said it once and I'll say it again. If you like it, then you should put a brim on it. Now, the one thing I don't like about 2.4 Preciser is that it does a brim separation gap of 0.1. I'm, no, put it to zero. Something like this, I go a brim width of at least five. You can see when we slice the part, he's got a nice bigger base and a larger contact area to the bed. This will hopefully mean that you have a better chance of it as it moves back and forth, not creating too many issues if your print does hit it. You can also look at enabling Z-Hop. In Prusa Slicer, that would be under your filament settings, under filament overrides, you can lift Z. If you don't wanna do it as a filament override and you wanna do it on the main printer itself, it is under print settings. We can see that stock Prusa Slicer does do a 0.4 millimeter Z-Hop. For most cases, that is more than adequate. If all of this worked out this way, I believe Mando would have had both of his legs. Life would have been just a little bit better for Nicole. But I think that she's, you know, taking it in stride. This is always fun to deal with. Little fails like this. I don't know. I personally enjoy it. Come back here and take what's coming to you. I'll bite your legs off. And last but not least, we have one of our own fails. It was actually basically Wednesday's video. Wednesday's video was all about custom resin 3D printing supports inside of Lychee Slicer. And... When Lychee Slicer updated from 3.6 to 3.6.4, it is in beta. I should have checked. I didn't. It reset our tip diameter from 0.4 to 0.2, which created the entire part of the series that we were trying to show you guys, which is how to create custom supports, have supports that didn't actually hold on to the parts. When we modified it to go back to 0.4, everything printed perfectly the second time. But then I failed even harder by taking those parts out, washing them, and because I didn't want to wear my big thick chem gloves, because they don't look great on camera, we wanted to use a little bit of a thinner glove or no glove at all. When cleaning off resin supports, I put them in the cure station for one minute. That was a dumb idea. What occurred is that we fully cured most of those supports, welding them onto the part, which resulted in lots of sanding on my part. Well over an hour, I believe. But if you want to see that entire video and the fix for it, because of course we talk about the fix for it, and we really do teach you how to do it, I just used the wrong settings the first time. We'll card to that video so you guys can take a look at it. I greatly appreciate everything that you guys are doing here. Thank you so much for your support in this channel and the growth that we've had. We're coming up on one year of making videos at least five days a week, which is absolutely insane to me. But again, wouldn't be possible without your all support. Thank you. All right. Well, those are this week's fails with 
fixes to help get everyone back up and running. Let me know down in those comments what you guys think of Print Fix Friday. I would love to get your opinions here. And if you do have some prints that you would like to submit, make sure you use the hashtag Print Fix Friday. That way we can see it. We would love to get more fan submissions because, well, makes it a lot less work on me to find things. And then we can help you guys directly make sure that your printers run in ship shape. Anyway, stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. As well as that. Eh. Hey, thanks so much for watching this installation of Print Fix Friday. If you want to get your fails looked at by the team at 3D Musketeers, make sure that you tag us on Instagram or Twitter. Use the hashtag Print Fix Friday so we can find them or just DM them to us. You can also email us YouTube at 3DMusketeers.com. Links will be in that description down below. A massive thank you goes out to all of our patrons and YouTube channel members whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Again, if you want to support what we do here at this channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash 3d musketeers with tiers starting as low as one dollar and of course youtube channel memberships are open so you can support right on the platform where you like consuming this content right below me will be the entire print fix friday series so you guys can go back and look at some of the interesting fails that we've had and some of the unique ways that we've tried to get you guys back up and running and right next to that is going to be the video all about custom resin supports where I did have some fails. I think you all might enjoy that. It was a fun one to film. I'll see you guys down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.